Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. No matter what you've been dealing with, how bad it is, how long it's been that way, it is overcomable. I know it may not seem that way. I may, you may have heard that it's not, but there is, there, there is no problem that's too big for God. It just is not. And if you look to Him, reach out to Him, He said, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. If you'll believe in His goodness and trust Him, He'll show you what you don't know. He'll lead you to the next step. That'll lead you to another step. And you keep following him, he'll bring you right out of the, the darkness, the destruction, the failure, whatever it is. Don't believe the lies that it's hopeless. Don't believe it. Uh, there is an enemy. There is a devil. There are evil spirits. And they're continually trying to convince you, all of us, that things are far worse than they actually are that everything's hopeless, you might as well just give up, you might as well quit. They're always trying to drive people into despondency, into despair, which is another word for faithlessness. No faith, no hope. That's how you perish. But with God, there's always hope. There's always help. There's always a way. Just because you haven't seen a way out doesn't mean there's not a way out. God knows it. He is the way. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the way. You are the way. And you know the way. You know the way. And you can make a way. And I believe it. And I believe it. And I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you. I refuse to give up. I refuse to, give up. I refuse to, I refuse up. to be hopeless. I refuse With to God, God, all things, all things are, possible. are possible. And I believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get your Bible. Get something to make a note with. Come on into the classroom with us and get ready to hear some answers. Not from me, from him, from his word, from his spirit, from him. Father, all of us come into agreement, touching this, asking you for the very word for now. Fresh manna from heaven. Exactly what would feed us build us up, and show us the way. And we give you the praise for it in advance. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for keeping us, delivering us, helping us. You're so faithful, so gracious. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look please again in our great textbook, the Bible, to Hebrews, the third chapter. We've been on a series now for a while that we're calling overcoming unbelief. Unbelief, as if you'll stay with us for a while, you'll, you'll begin to see this clearer and clearer, I, I think. Unbelief is one of the worst things that could happen to you. I mean, bar none. It, it, it's right there at the top of the list of the very worst things that could ever happen to you. You might think, well, unbelief, yes, because all of the other things, you know, no matter what, how, how bad the need is or the failure or whatever, God can fix it if you'll believe him. He can fix it. But if you won't trust him and you won't listen to him and you won't believe him, you get in a place where he can't help you. And if he can't help you, who else could help you? You're, you're, you see why I say it's one of the worst things that could ever happen to you? And that's what happened to 
the Israelites that were delivered out of Egyptian bondage in uh, Hebrews 3 and 18, it says, To whom swear he that they should not enter and do his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. It's not that God couldn't get them into the promised land. He brought their, their kids after they grew up. He brought them in. It's not that it wasn't his will. It was his will. He try, but he couldn't convince them of it. He, 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 God, I'm talking about, could not convince them to trust him instead of the other stuff they were doing. And so that first generation wandered around out there in the, in the wilderness for 40 years, died young, died wrong, missed out on the promised land that God had planned for them. They were robbed of God's blessings and benefits. They were robbed of God's best, not by giants. You couldn't even say by the devil. It was by their own unbelief. You might say, well, what's, what's that got to do with me? That happened a long time ago. Uh, read the next verse. Chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Is he saying the same thing could happen to us that happened to them? Yes, obviously. And, and why is he talking to us about it? Because he doesn't want that to happen to us. He wants us to have a different outcome than what they had. Go with me to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And, and I want you to get stirred in your spirit. You and I are going on a crusade. <laughs> to stamp out unbelief. Amen. Hmm? In our life. And in our area that we have influence and choice. You can't control everybody. and Don't try to. But when it comes to you and your things. What we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, Go, we're going to learn the identifiers and characteristics of this ugly stuff called unbelief so that we recognize it when it comes up and we give it no place. We shut it down before it gets started because we don't want to, first of all, we want to please God. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. If you're full of unbelief, you're not going to be pleasing God. But then also, we don't want to miss out. <laughs> On the good things God has planned for us like they did. How many don't want to miss out on the good things that God. Right. Well then you got to though. Give no place to unbelief. And in this world. Unbelief is just everywhere. I mean it just. The very environment in, in most places. Is just permeated with it. It's so common. People don't notice it. When you talk unbelief. It just sounds normal. What they do notice is when you talk faith. If you start talking faith, oh, you start calling those things that be not as though they were. <laughs> you start making faith declarations that are different from what you see and feel. Do people notice that? Oh, man, they're like, what are they doing? You know, they're, are, are they nuts? Is something wrong with them? Why, why does that sound so strange to them when the word's full of it? When that's how God himself operates, that's how he taught us. Why does it seem so strange? Because there's so much unbelief all around us. And you know, have you read the gospel accounts? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What, did, what was Jesus referring to uh, on a regular basis? Uh, why are you so full of fear, he would say. How is it that you have no faith? He rebuked them for their hardness of heart and their unbelief. When the Bible said in Matthew 13, it said, He could there do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Was unbelief a hindrance to Jesus? It was. And so if it was a hindrance to Him, it'd be a hindrance to anybody. We can't control everybody. It's not our job. I can control me. You can control you. And I'm on a crusade to get all the unbelief out of Keith. Huh? So that Keith is 
unbelief free. Amen. Right? Yeah. Zero. <laughs> unbelief. Now, you might say, well, aren't you already that way? You need to keep listening. Because why are we talking about this? Why would he say, uh, take heed, watch, lest this happen to you, if it was a non-issue? Uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1, he says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What he's talking about is there was a, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord visibly, physically manifested the presence of God uh, in the daytime by a pillar of fire out there with God's people. Everybody could see it. You could see it from miles away. And it moved. <laughs> it would stay in one place for a while. And when it did, the people would stay and camp there. But it would start moving. And when it did, the people knew, okay, time to pack up and get moving. And so uh, they would follow it until it stopped again. At, uh, at night time, it was a pillar of fire. In the daytime, it was a pillar of cloud. So it was both. But that's what he's saying. Uh, all our fathers were under that cloud and all passed through the sea. That's the Red Sea that was split. And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. We're seeing that those things were a type of Christian baptism. And he said they did all eat the same spiritual meat. Now in King James, that word meat means food. And they did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed, other translations say, that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. If you remember, and again, don't neglect your Old Testament. If you hadn't read it before, go back there and read it. These things are in the book of Exodus. If you'll just start reading in the first chapter and come through, then you'll see how they were delivered out of Egyptian bondage, and then you'll get right into these things that he's talking about now, Exodus. And it said that uh, they drank of that rock. Well, part of what happened with them is uh, God brought water out of a rock, and it was enough water to feed couple of million people, or, or to give them a drink for their thirst, a couple of million people plus all of their livestock, cows, sheep, goats, all of that. So a lot of water. And the scripture said that rock was Christ. Hallelujah. Can Christ quench your thirst? <laughs> Man, there's so much through all this, isn't it? Verse 5, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Was it God's perfect will for them to be overthrown in the wilderness? No. For them to wander around out there for 40 years and die? No, that was not the will of God. And this is where a lot of people are confused. And, and if, you, if you still struggle with this, don't just think, well, I don't know if I agree with you, preacher, talking about me. The book... Put your nose in this book and not just a half a verse somewhere. Study it, read it, pray about it, and be honest and let the Lord show you the truth. Beware of religious tradition. It's, people think it's God, but it's not God. It's man-made, man-derived ideas and concepts and doctrine. It sounds religious. They're talking about God, but it's actually contradicting God's Word. Jesus said, you've made the Word of God of none effect because of your traditions. Beware of traditions, religious traditions. He goes on to say, many of them, God was not well pleased. If them being overthrown in the wilderness was God's will, He would have been pleased with that. Right? He wasn't pleased with it. He wasn't pleased with them. He wasn't pleased with what happened to them out there. These things are our examples, examples for us. Everybody said out loud, these things, these things are, examples for me. are examples for 
are examples for me. They're examples, our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they lusted, neither be idolaters as were some of them, as it's written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Today, should Christians avoid these things now? Absolutely. Even though you're saved and you don't, you don't earn your righteousness in the new covenant, it's a gift given to you by what Jesus has done, even so, can doing these things cause you problems in life? No question. Could it cause you to come short of what God had for you? Not that you'd be lost, but that in this life, you'd be robbed. Like they got robbed, is what he's saying. Absolutely. Verse 11, now all these things happen to them, he says it again, for examples. And they're written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come, wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Let me read this to you from some uh, other translations that uh, I think are real good, the way it's worded in some of these. Uh, the, the Living Bible says in verse 11, it says, Now all these things happen to them as examples, as object lessons to us, to warn us against doing the same things. They were written down so that we could read about them and learn from them in these last days as the world nears its end. Can you see how, how wrong it is for so many to be just completely neglecting the Old Testament and going, well, you know, that don't apply to us anymore. Have you read 1 Corinthians? <laughs> right? Because this says it does. Verse 12, again in the Living Bible, it says, So be careful if you are thinking, Oh, I would never behave like that. <laughs> Let this be a warning to you, for you too may fall into sin. He, when the scripture says, take heed, does that mean never mind? <laughs> Is that like almost the same <laughs> as never mind? Why would I say that? Because... Many, many people are just completely ignorant of all this. They've never read this. They don't know it. And even some folks that do, they only have certain verses and spots that they like to go to and talk about. Anything else, uh, they just like, okay, never mind, never mind. Yeah, okay, it happened back there. Okay, yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, next. <laughs> what does take heed mean? We talked about this a little bit last week. He said, uh, let this be a warning. And don't, don't be thinking, oh, I would never behave like that. Then you are not prepared for the temptation that's coming. Because the enemy will tempt you just like he tempted them to doubt God, question God, yield to depression, Yield to fear. Why? To rob you. The thief comes to do what? Steal. Kill and destroy. Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. One translation says to the full and have and enjoy life to the full until it overflows, the Amplified says. That sounds like Canaan's land. Yes. Right? Yes. Canaan's land. Good things. And plenty of it. But it's not automatic. And what he's cautioning us here is even after God had so spectacularly delivered his people out of death and bondage, then they failed to go in and enjoy all the benefits that you should have enjoyed after being delivered. Well, that deliverance, and you know, he mentioned here, they were baptized in that cloud and, and through the Red Sea. 
that, that's depicting the new birth. You and I have been delivered from bondage to sin and death. You and I have been delivered from eternal judgment and separation from God. You and I have been saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And baptized into the body of Christ. and Should be baptized in water too. and Identifying with Him publicly in front of people. But that's not the end. Having been saved from death, there's a journey now. A journey in this life. A journey from here till we get to the other side. Is it all bad or is there a good place that God has for us? Is there a promised land? Is there a Canaan's land? And what he's saying is, even though you've been saved and delivered, don't let yourself get robbed by falling into the same tricks and traps of unbelief like they did. Let's just stop and pray it right now. Say, Father God, God, I see this in your word. And I ask you, open my eyes and enlighten my heart and my understanding and help me to recognize and realize unbelief, what it is, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it acts like, so that by your grace, I give no place to it and am not robbed by the enemy. Thank you for keeping me safe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen to what the, uh, the, the message Bible says on this same verses here, verse 11 and 12. It says, these are all warning markers, danger <laughs> in our books, <laughs> written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. Our positions in the story are parallel. They at the beginning, we at the end. And we are just as capable of messing it up as they were. (laughs) Well, why would he be talking to us about it if it didn't pertain to us? Don't be so naive and self-confident you're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. He goes on talking about, uh, instead of self-confidence, have God confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there is, if we're talking about faith, and this is faith school, we can't properly talk about this without talking about unbelief. Because that's what uh, so many have and are, are, have done and are doing instead of believing, unbelieving not believing. And the thing is, it's subtle. The enemy is so crafty, so tricky. And what we see is in our studies that we've done a couple of weeks ago is that these folks that God brought out of Egyptian bondage, by the time they got to the promised land and they're supposed to go in, move in, it's time to move in to your dream. The scripture says God revealed that they had refused to believe him 10 major times. And this one here at Kadesh Barnea was the 10th one. And that they are apparently, obviously, and God knew, they're not going to change. It wouldn't have mattered if they'd have had another 100 opportunities. They've already proven they're not going to change. What what does that mean? In their defiant, uh, unwilling, disobedient unbelief. And so he says, well, okay. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. You won't listen to me. You won't do what I'm telling you to do. So you're going to get what you've been saying all these times. Sadly, what they had been saying is we're all going to die out here. Every time a problem came up, that was the first thing out of their mouth. Could they have said something else, class? Come on, help me out. Huh? We're going to see it 
Every time there was some kind of challenge, some kind of need, some kind of danger, some kind of issue, first thing they're going is, the first thing, first thing they start saying is, oh, you should have left us in Egypt. Oh, we're all going to die out here. Uh, why did you do this to us? Uh, could they have done something else? Yes. What could they have done? They could have made a different choice. They could have looked at it differently. They could have said, well, now, hold up. You see what God has already done? They said we couldn't get out of Egypt either. Our forefathers had been slaves for 400 years. And here we are, free, healed, got money in our pockets. <laughs> right? Why do you have to just throw up your hands and go, it'll never work? Could they have said, God's brought us this far? Well, come on, class, are y'all with me? Could they have said, if God's with us, we can do it. Isn't that what Joshua said, what Caleb said? Caleb said, let's go. Amen. We can do it, right? Yes. When all the rest of them are saying, there's no way, we can't do it. Faith is a choice. And every day of your life, dear friend, every day and every night, things are coming. Pressures, temptations, issues, lack, need, problem, challenges. And at every one of those, it's up to us whether we go, I can't take it anymore. It's never going to work. Uh, you know, God don't like me. Where is God? That's how you perish. That's how you die in the wilderness. That's how you're robbed. Or, like faith school people. Amen. <laughs> I said, or. You can look up, even past your tears, even past all the questions, and go, God, I trust you. Amen. I trust you, God. Amen. You got me this far. You will get me the rest of the way. Yes. Whatever I need, you'll give me. Whatever I don't know, you'll show me. Lord, I trust you. And I'm saying, we always triumph. Amen. You always yes. cause me yes. to triumph. And overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You start talking like that, thinking like that, believing like that. I'm telling you, God will show up in your life and you will be a living testimony. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Our time's up again. Let's say it as we leave. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to to God. We'll see you again next time here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390. 